How are you doing? I'm Tom, and it's time for another rainy day gun review. Just a little quick side note. I think I'm going to change this from calling it a rainy day gun review to just great hunting rifles. And the reason for that, it, this started as, hey, it's, it's raining, there's nothing much to do outside, or nothing much I can do, so let's just talk about guns and, you know, look at different hunting rifles. But just from a search feature and me trying to grow the channel a little bit, I'm going to change the name just to see, you know, how that works. Just a little experiment here. So any of you that's seen the early videos, you know, this started as the rainy day gun review. But in the future, it's just going to be great hunting rifles. And again, that's just to try to, you know, show up better in searches and stuff for YouTube. Try to grow the channel a little bit. And ultimately, that, that's my goal with this, is just to review great hunting rifles. And hey, you know, it's just fun talking about hunting rifles. Let's just put it that way. And that's what we're here to do today. And today I have a truly great hunting rifle. I've got another Ruger here. But this time, this is the Ruger all-weather M77. This one's a Mark II. And they've been called a lot of things. The boat paddle stock, skeleton stock, Zytel stock. I don't even know what the official Ruger name was. Um, we've just all had our own terms for it. But this was a truly great hunting rifle. They haven't made these since I'm guessing early 2000s. And as far as the history on these, it, this is one of those rifles, and we've got a lot of rifles like this. They're not old enough to be historically significant, so there's no books out there, you know, to tell you all the dates and the different, you know, modifications and styles and cartridges and so forth. Um, when did they start making them? When did they quit? All the really detailed information. So it's not old enough to fall into that category. At the same time, it's just old enough that you really can't find a lot of information on them. You can check the internet, different forums and stuff, and they'll tell you the different cartridges these were chambered in over the years. Um, they did come with different inserts. Okay, these have inserts right here on the fore end and on the gr pistol grip. The very first rifles had green inserts on them. And that was, I believe, 89, I believe is the first year Ruger came out with the stock. And 89, 90, those would have been your green inserts. And then in 91, and this is speculation, I don't know this for a fact. 91's when Ruger modified the M77 and came out with the Mark II. All right, this is a Mark II. And I'm pretty sure the Mark IIs are when they started with the black inserts. At 91's when Ruger came out to the Mark II. 91 seems to be when they came out the black inserts. So that just, and that makes sense that they've got a new action or slightly modified action. So therefore they did some changes to the stock. Again, it, it kind of makes sense. All right, so let's talk about what makes this a great hunting rifle. Well, just my opinion here, this is a great hunting rifle because it was designed to be a great hunting rifle. And I know that sounds funny because you would think all hunting rifles were designed to be great hunting rifles, but that's not the case. Most hunting rifles today are designed to be First of all, cheap. They're designed to give target rifle accuracy. And they're designed to look halfway decent. You know, a lot of them look, are good looking rifles. Well, that's pretty much your, your criteria for most of the rifles designed today. Not all. And I understand that. I mean, they got. A gun manufacturer can't stay in business if they don't sell rifles. 
All right. Well, that's how you sell rifles. You, you give people what they're wanting, and that's what most people want today. They want target rifle accuracy. They want it to look pretty decent, and they want it cheap. Well, that's what gun manufacturers are producing. This rifle here has none of those features. <laughs> none of them. <laughs> A lot of people think this is the ugliest stock ever, ugliest rifle ever. People, when these first came out, people would pull the stocks off and just go get a new stock so that it looked good and looked more traditional. All right, so they've never been famous for looking good. Although, I, I'll be honest, I always thought these did look pretty good. But, all right, so in, in terms of looking good, they don't have that. Target rifle accuracy. This gun is not, it doesn't have that. Um, near as I can figure, I've just started load testing for this one. I'm guessing it's going to be around a, a one and a quarter MOA gun. It might come in less, but that's, that's where this one's at right now anyway, with what little bit of shooting I've done with it. And these weren't particularly cheap. So... This doesn't meet any of the criteria for, for a modern hunting rifle. But that's also what makes it a great hunting rifle. It wasn't designed for those three things. It was designed for hunting. In terms of accuracy, you don't need target rifle accuracy for a hunting rifle. It's, you don't need sub-MOA rifles. You, you need minute of deer. I mean, that's... An inch and a quarter, as is, out of the box, no modifications. Hey, that's that's minute of deer. This rifle will take a deer at 300 yards, no problem. What else could you ask for from a hunting rifle? Now, I know a lot of you today are into the extreme long-range stuff. Well, most of the people that are actually out in the woods shooting deer, all right, and I'm not talking about the people watching YouTube videos. I mean the people actually in the woods. Most aren't doing the extreme long range hunting. For, for most, 200 yards is a long shot. In actual real world, if you went hunting tomorrow, you're, if a deer walks out on you, it's probably going to be a, right around 100 yards or less. Again, depending on where you hunt, situation, I know there's you know, different things there, but most people aren't shooting that far. You know, the crazy five, six, seven hundred yards you see on YouTube. That's, most can't shoot that far accurately, even with a precision rifle. It's, and, and again, and for most of us, that's not hunting. For some of you, it is. And some of you want to get into that. And, you know, it's individual preference. But again, for the for the majority of people that are actually hunting, this, this rifle is more than accurate enough. And I'm convinced that I could free float the barrel here, bed the action, and this gun would probably be sub in my way. It would, I have no doubt about that. But there's advantages to this gun being as it is. And we'll get into that in just a minute. And this is getting back to, this was, this was designed to be a hunting rifle. Right. And another great example of that is the stock. Okay, this is a synthetic stock. And it's Zytel, it's a material DuPont came out with. And for those of you that have heard or seen the old Remington, the nylon Remington 22s, mm -hmm. Zytel is the material used to make those. So the material's been around a really long time, and it's, it's just about indestructible. Okay, so when Ruger put, chose to make the stocks out of this material, they didn't do it because it was cheap. And that's why most rifles today have synthetic stocks. It's not to make the gun better, it's to make it cheaper. All right. This one's not on here to make it cheaper. It's on here to make it better, which again, that's, that's a rare thing these days. 
And the reason for that, Ruger wanted to build an indestructible, all-weather function, no matter what rifle. That's what this is. If I'm, I believe back in the day, I hadn't seen one of these commercials in years, but when I used to advertise the stock, they'd show a truck running over it. Didn't phase it. All right, these are that tough. Th these are not hollow, cheap, flexible, you know, bend any direction stocks. These stocks are solid. All right, there's, there's no give in, to, in this. That's why they could do the cutouts and stuff like they did to give it that skeleton profile. Because these stocks are so tough, they didn't need the extra material. And that's what you want with a hunting rifle. You want something tough. The action on here. Right. And let me take this apart because this is, this is something most of you never see. And this is why the looks of a rifle can get you in trouble. Gun manufacturers can make a rifle look good, but you don't know how it's constructed you take the action out of the stock and then that's when you start seeing what's going on with the rifle and how it was actually made so let's pull this one apart stainless again extreme weather stainless will rust on you but not near as quickly as blued steel all right so stainless action plastic stock. This was designed for bad weather. But at the heart of the rifle is a Ruger M77 action. All right. And this is what all Ruger M77s have. Notice it's square. That's, that's the first thing. This action square. The recoil look. It's part of the action. Okay, it's integral. Notice on the bolt, you've got the claw extractor. We'll pull this bolt out and I'll give you a little closer look. All right. And notice the bolt release. All right. And if any of this is starting to look familiar, it's basically because Ruger designed this to be an improved Mauser M98 action from day one. The M77, when Ruger designed this back in the late 60s. This was intended to be an improved Mauser action. Well, that's what the Winchester Model 70s were. Well, right, we've got the bolt here. Again, claw extractor, blade ejector. All right, so let's get into a little history to explain why any of this matters. All right, back in the day, the Mauser M98 was pretty much recognized as about as good as it gets for a bolt action. I mean, that's, it, it has been the standard since 1898. Winchester copied it. Uh, Springfield 1903 copied it. And just about everybody copied it. The pre-64 Model 70 Winchester. It was an improved M98. Some would say not as good. Some would say, some would say better. It's personal opinion. But it's really close to the M98 action. Because of manufacturing costs, Winchester changed the action from control feed to push feed in 1964. And basically, Remington and Savage was killing Winchester in marketplace. Model 700. It, 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 that was its heyday. That's when it, not long after it came out. And before that, Remington had the Model 721 and 722, which were essentially the same as the 700. The 700 Remington just updated the 721 and 722 in the early 60s. Called it the 700. Okay, and great hunting rifle. But it was designed to be cheaper. It was designed to be manufactured 
at a lower cost. All right, so what Remington did, they got rid of the square receiver and they made it round. That way they could make it out of bar stock. Call savings. Remington, what they did with the recoil lug on the model, so <clears throat> what Remington did with the recoil lug on the model 700 was they basically turned it into a washer. All right, so you would screw the barrel in and then the recoil lug went between the barrel and the action. Again, saving money, cost. Winchester, it cost Winchester a lot more to make the Model 70 because their receivers were forged. And if any of you know about forgings, it's an expensive process. For some things it works out better, but it's generally, forging generally gives you the strongest results. Okay. That's why the original actions were forged, but it costs more money. By Remington going to the bar stock, all right, they, they could machine it and heat treat it real easy. And that's the other thing with the forging you have to machine all this. All right, well, that was the expensive part was the machining. And that's what, you know, everybody was trying to get away from. And to Winchester's credit, even the post-64 actions are still square. And a lot of people don't realize that. Winchester got rid of the control feed. All right, so they got rid of the full-length extractor in 64. Just purely to save money. That was the only reason. All right. The bolts were cheaper, easier to make. The action itself, though, on the Winchesters didn't change a whole lot. All right. So Winchester, again, Winchester had to do it. They didn't want to. They were losing market share and their guns cost too much. People weren't buying them. They were buying cheaper made rifles. Right. Bill Ruger was a smart man. What he did, he looked at what was going on. He looked at the marketplace. He looked at everybody else making their actions, you know, changing them so that they were cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to produce. But none of those changes were made to make the actions any better. They were made to make them cheaper. So what Bill Ruger did, and this was, this was pretty brilliant on his part, he changed the process rather than changing the action. So he came out with the M77 and I believe 68, right around there. And he went to a completely new process for the metal. He, he went to what's called lost wax process. All right, this is a casting, it's not a forging. Well, what that allowed Ruger to do was make extremely precise castings that didn't need much machining. That's how he saved money was by making castings instead of forgings and making them close to that size so that they didn't require the machining. All right, so the first M77s, while everybody else was going push feed, they were still push feed, but they did have the claw extractor. Right. Well, the claw extractor, that's something that doesn't matter too much at the range. But for a hunter, it's just a better extractor. If you get grit, mud, sand, whatever in here when you chamber a cartridge, you end up with a stuck case in here. This is going to get it out a whole lot better than the really small extractors on the push feed rifles. All right. This is just a more tougher, better design. Again, at the range, it, it doesn't matter. In the woods, you know, especially if you're hiking in somewhere, you know, extreme situations, extreme weather, you know, extreme conditions, you can't beat a claw extractor. That's why the original Mausers had the claw extractor. That's why the United States Army copied it when they came out with the 1903 Springfield. That's why the Winchester pre-64s had it. That's why Winchester eventually went back to it. Okay. 
again, everybody else is making their rifles cheaper. Ruger figured out how to change the process and go back to the original designs, which were just better designs. Okay, then in 91, and I mentioned the, the first Zytel stocks had green inserts. Well, 91 Ruger came out with the Mark II, and that's what this is, is a Mark II. What they did then in 91 was they changed it so that it was now a control feed instead of a push feed. Right. So when I look at Ruger, and this is, you know, I know Ruger has a, a lot of different products out there. Some good, some bad, mostly good. Ruger has just got a great reputation. But what the M77 and the number one, Ruger's great hunting rifles. They have a tradition of making improvements rather than just cutting costs. All right, well, that's what this is. This is really close to an original Mauser M98 action. And over the years, that's the direction Ruger's gone in. Ever since this rifle was introduced, they've gone in that direction. And they've continued to make improvements. Another change on this rifle. All right. The safety. The first M77s had a Tang safety, and I know a lot of y'all love those Tang safeties. They went to the three position safety, just like on the pre-64 Winchesters and the post-64s for that matter. I don't think Winchester ever did change the safety. And this is really similar to the original Mauser safeties. The Mauser safeties were on the bolt. This is off to the side, but the reason, and a lot of people call these the logger safeties, or they did back in the day and they said Ruger just went to it because of the loggers and so forth. And they might have, that's possible. But as far as reliability and just being robust and solid, this is about the best safety ever designed other, other than the original Mauser 98 safety here, which was also a three position safety. That's again, the Winchester Model 70, pre-64 especially, and the Ruger M77s, these are direct descendants of the Mauser M98. Quality. Remington, go back, you know, far enough, Remington was copying it too. The, the reason Remington quit was to save money. The Model 700 is absolutely outstanding rifle, but the changes made to it were not made to make it better, it's made to make it cheaper. And that's most rifles today. I mean, that's just the facts. All right, so today's rifles were never designed to be great hunting rifles. They were designed to be, like I said, to start with, to look good. Hey, they got a sale and appeal to you while they're on the shelf. Target rifle accuracy, and they do a good job of that. And to be cheap. Because right, that's the other thing most of us are looking at is the price tag. We want that cheap rifle that's going to do it all. Unfortunately, and just my opinion here, the, the cheap rifles are never going to do it all. They're never going to be as solid as this. And unfortunately, again, you, you don't know this till you pull the the action out of the stock. You can't see what's going on on the cheap rifles now. Right. Integral recoil load. That means it's, it's literally part of the action. It's made into it. It's not welded on. It's not glued on. It's not pressed on, riveted, bolted, screwed in. It's part of it. All right. You pull out, take a lot of the rifles today out of their stocks and look at the recoil lugs. If they even have one. All right. That, another Ruger product, Ruger American. They pretty much got rid of the recoil lug and it's, they've got channels cut 
and the round stock, not square, round. They've got channels cut into it and then two pieces in the stock that act like wedges basically that sits into it. And it works. I mean, those are accurate rifles. But it's not this. And that's why when you look on the shelf there, that's why this costs more. It, it costs more to make this. Pick up a Tika. I keep hearing how many people love a Tika. Take one of those out of the stock. They got a recoil lug and it's going to fall out because it's, it's, it's a shim basically that sits in a slot in here. They didn't even bother to glue it in. And then the other end goes into the stock. So that's, that's the difference between your older rifles like this and your budget rifles. This is going to last. Those will last for however long. I, I, I can't tell you how long. They're going to work. They'll get you a deer. Just because a rifle is a budget rifle doesn't mean it can't be a great hunting rifle. But this was designed for from the get-go to be a great hunting rifle. I respect what Bill Ruger did. He had to compete with all the changes going on during the 60s, just like Winchester had to compete with it, you know, Remington, Savage, they, they were all competing against each other, a lot of competition. A lot of changes made to make rifles cheaper. Bill Ruger figured out how to change the process rather than the design of the rifles. And I've, I've always respected that. You know, that's, that's, that was a pretty brilliant move on his part. And that's why Ruger was able, that's why Bill Ruger was able to start a gun company in the 60s. And it was competitive before Ruger got there. But he was able to design rifles and pistols that could compete with anybody. And he, some of his innovations, some of his firearms were truly innovative. The 1022 came out with that in the 60s. But a lot of what he did was just return to the original designs and just change the process. The Ruger number one. You know, how much older of a design do you want? <laughs> he built a legendary hunting rifle off that design. The M77, same thing. And it, is this the perfect hunting rifle? I think for some people it is. For me, it's not. It's the perfect bad weather hunting rifle. But some of you live in conditions, some of you live in places that bad conditions are your normal That's during deer season. And for those of you that live and hunt in those type places, this, this just very well could be the perfect hunting rifle. And I know there's newer all weather designs out there now and stuff, but to me, this was the original. I remember when this rifle came out and just thinking, you know, that that's a tough rifle. As far as um, fit on the rifle, there's a pretty good drop on the comb here. Right, so this isn't the greatest cheek weld. All right. If you're hunting extreme weather, though, you know, you're you're. You've got on some serious headgear, hats and so forth, insulated, you know, baklavas and things like that. This drop on the comb gives you plenty of space with that headgear. Okay, for driving tacks at the range, this isn't the best design. All right. But for out there in bad weather, again, with some, you know, some serious headgear on, it's a great design. So, you know, this just gets back into this is a great hunting rifle. It's not a great target rifle. It's not a, never was a budget rifle. And it don't look particularly great to most people. This is a great hunting rifle. And that's why I wanted to 
do this one today. And since I'm going to start calling this great hunting rifles, it just, it, it's the perfect rifle for this. All right, I think that covered it on the Ruger M77 all weather Mark II Zytel boat paddle skeleton stock. And hey, if y'all got any comments or stories of your own about yours, hey, comment at the bottom. And if you enjoyed this video, hey, give it a thumbs up. Matter of fact, any shooting gun related video you see, give it a thumbs up. Show YouTube you like gun videos. And if you want to see any future videos, just hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified, hit the notification bell. And God bless. Y'all have a good day.